Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've been um, trying to answer some comments and watch uh, a video by Blue Heaven, uh, a couple of them actually, and um, a few other little short ones. I've been trying to, you know, watch some of yours as I go. I do that. And I may not always comment, but I'm watching them. And and y'all are such a blessing. Now, this last one that I watched from Gigi from Blue Heaven, she had a man, and I'm sorry I don't remember his name, on the phone. She was recording him, and it was all about 11-11. And her prophecy that she got um, in 1994. I'll find it and link it in the description box in case some of you are not familiar with her. And I did not realize that she had gotten that prophecy. And because um, I didn't get, to, I don't get to watch all of her videos either. So I catch them when I can, and I miss some. It's the same for everybody. Okay, so I'm listening to this and this guy talking about what the Lord showed him. And he hears from the Lord the same way I do. Telepathically is what I call it. Well, long story short, it appears we're looking at an April rapture. It appears. I'm going to put that in quotes because... I didn't hear it myself, but I believe, I most certainly believe other people hear it from the Lord. If you all remember, Acts 2, 17 and 18, as well as the book of Joel, or Joel, however you say it, chapter 2, verses, let's see, it's 28 and 29, I believe, says, and in the end days, I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind, and they shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Okay, then it goes into the, and there will be columns of, there will be vapors of smoke, columns of fire and vapors of smoke. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light or the moon will be turned to blood. It's worded differently in different areas. But anyway, on that great and terrible day of the Lord. Okay, depending on your version. That's basically what it says. Oh, and it ends with, buddy, buddy, ouch, I'm so sorry. The last line is, and he who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Buddy, come, come, come here, come here, come here. Well, he doesn't usually do that. Somebody out there in that hall, he doesn't like. He's been so protective of me. When I get sick, oh, he goes into overdrive. Anyway, yeah, it's across the hall. Anyway, uh, I said all that to say, there are still the comments hanging around. You'll see them on every one of these People are talking about April, uh, could be April 6th or 7th, which today is the 6th. It could be as early as tonight <laughs> and all the way up to Easter. And you still see that, oh, no man knows the day or the hour. If I had a dollar for every time I saw that, I'd be so rich. <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing it. That was written 
that was given to those men who wrote that in their Gospels how many years ago? And you don't think those of you who want to hold to that, you don't think that Jesus would know by now? You don't think he could give us a clue? I've had a hundred clues. Listen to these videos. If you will open your minds, I'm talking to those of you who want to hold to the no man knows the day or the hour. I'm going to title this that. Because that's what those people like to hear. And they are the ones that need to hear this. Our Lord can do anything he wants. And he has embedded clues all throughout scriptures about his first coming. And then he got on to the Pharisees for not knowing the time of their visitation. Did he not? He said, Woe unto you, you hypocrites. You, how is it that you can discern that if the sky is red at night, it'll be fair weather tomorrow. But if the sky is red in the morning, it's going to be bad weather for that day. Well, we've, we even use that. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. Well, maybe it came from the Bible. But they were supposed to know that. They knew that. And they went by it. But Jesus said, oh, you know that. But you can't discern. You couldn't discern the time of your visitation. Well, we're supposed to be figuring out the time of our visitation. The time of his return. Or else we will be caught like thieves, I'm sorry, as the victims of a thief, we don't want to be found. Help me, Holy Spirit. Caught off guard, like a person would be if their house was broken into in the middle of the night by a thief. What did Jesus say? First, the strong man First, you would bind up the strong man and then break in and steal. Or that was just one parable. There's so many parables that allude to how we're not supposed to be caught off guard. And you sure can't go around thinking, well, there, there's no way we can know because we don't know the day or the hour. And so you just live with this blase kind of, I'm ready, I'm, I'm ready to go. If I died tonight, I'm ready to go. Let Jesus come now, I'm ready to go. But really, you don't mean that. Because if you really, really wanted Jesus to come now, you'd be doing what we're doing. You'd be looking. You would be so searching those scriptures for all those clues. No, oh, it's so easy for you just to type out a comment. No man knows the day or the hour. And all y'all do is, is make a guess and it doesn't come to pass. And then it, it turns baby Christians away and, and they lose their faith. Well, if that happens, then they were those seeds that were thrown into dirt, rocky soil, thorny soil. Matters of the world came and took them away. Birds came and ate them up. Hey, we cannot be responsible for everybody who gives up. Because some people following some scriptures, hopefully, and not just the word of a man. Now, when one man comes around and talks some group into all killing yourself to jump aboard a comet. Well, come on. That's just ridiculous. I mean, we are expected to use common sense, you know what I mean? 
So we can't go by that kind of stuff. You do have to go by the word, but you cannot take the prophecies given to us and throw them out the window, especially that person in the comment that, that said, lay people cannot discern when God is talking to them. Why? Well, I'll tell you what. Those paid preachers are the ones who have no discernment because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. If they were, they would be bringing the Holy Spirit into their churches and everyone in their churches would, if not already received the Holy Spirit, they would be on their way to. And Jesus wouldn't be so mad at the church today. And that is why so many are going to get left behind. Because of their not spirit-filled pastors who have no discernment. They cannot rightly divide the word of God. And it makes me angry that it is that way. But I know that Satan is behind it. And you need to know it too. And I pray that you understand what I'm saying. That Satan started me messing with the church immediately. Causing people to doubt. The ones that already had demons in them immediately started meddling and interfering. And eventually he got the Jesuits and the Catholic Church started and the Jesuits started seminaries when all those churches started breaking away the Lutherans and the Methodists and Episcopalians and the Presbyterians and the Baptists however many hundreds of years apart when the seminaries got built they went in and took over And I don't have a list of videos, but you can research it yourself. Satan has taken over all those denominational churches that do not invite the Holy Spirit in. That's so sad. So, yeah. God has left us clues. Jesus has left us clues in his living word. And, yes, we can trust new words. People who say, all you need is the Bible. Well, the Bible is down to 66 books and there used to be 88. What? was in those 22 books. There was an awful lot just in Enoch alone. How much do we not know? So for anybody to tell me that that's not scriptural, I can't find that in the Bible. Maybe it was in there. Satan did his best to remove all he could. Maybe some of them didn't belong in there, but I find it really odd that there were 88 and now there's 66. There is a story in numbers. Numbers do communicate. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I had no intention of saying all that. I guess he did. I can only do this by his help. Well, I'm going to stop it there. I've lectured enough. And I hope you realize, those of you who still think that we cannot know the day or the hour, I think maybe we can. Maybe we can. So I will just say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over the internet connection so it will go up and over each and every one of you as well. Alright, bye bye for now. I'll talk to you later.